lies But victory or defeat It's up to me to decide But how can I expect to win If I never try Oh, I just can't keep up now I've come too far from where I started from Nobody told me the road will be easy And I don't believe it's brought me this far to leave me Never said there wouldn't be trials Never said I wouldn't fall Never said that everything would go The way I wanted to go But when my back is against the wall And I feel like hope is lost I just lift my hands up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. Whoa, I just can't give up now. Cause I've come too far, I've come too far from where I started from. Hey, hey, hey. Nobody, nobody told me that the road, the road I'm shivering, I'm shivering as I was singing. But I want to give my life to Christ today. If I wasn't born again, I'll do it right now. Nobody has promised you tomorrow. Thank you very much, Billy. That was beautiful, powerful ministration. We thank the Lord for a wonderful time, and I believe that we've come to 
receive from the Lord. Amen. We say, we are happy to see you. Wonderful. We thank the Lord. And I believe that God is going to um, come through to us and bless us and turn our lives around. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Well, we are glad to have our father back home. He's been away for a very, 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 very long time. But thank God that when father travels, he brings toffees, he brings toys, and today he's bringing more than toys and toffees. He's bringing the word from the Lord himself. Let's stand to our feet and receive the bishop as he ministers to us today. Nothing is impossible for those who believe and say. I still the same. I expect a miracle, and I expect a miracle today. Father, we thank you for today. We ask you to lead us by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please turn with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I am sharing with you about the art of hearing. Hearing the voice of God. Following the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 28 And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God Let's read it together Ready go And it shall come to pass Where are you? Verse 3, blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thine kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Amen. Look at verse 1 again. And it shall come to pass that if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of thy the voice of what? The Lord thy God. To observe. To observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above the nations of the earth. Amen. Amen. That is how important the voice of God is. What will set you high above in this life is to hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. The voice of God is the most important voice that you need to hear. You need to believe. The voice of God. Amen. Amen. If God told you today, don't go home tonight, how many would go home? How many wouldn't go home? God said, don't go home. You would be afraid to go home. Is that not so? If God said, don't fly, would you fly? If God said, don't travel, would you travel? You wouldn't travel. So the voice of God is a very important voice. And that is why anybody who hearkens to the voice of God, are you listening to me, ends up being very blessed in this life. He says, I will set you on high. Amen. Amen. The Lord thy God will set thee on high. On high. Everybody say, I'm going up high. Say, I'm, so, I'm going up high. God wants to set you on high. 
above all that is around you, that would like to keep you down, that would like to keep you suppressed, that would like to keep you below. God wants to set you on high. Amen. amen. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have a better amen? amen? So the Lord wants to set you on high, and he's showing you how he's going to set you on high. And he says, if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, the voice of God. If God's voice can be listened to by you, amen, God will set you on high. Amen. And so the most important thing I believe for us now is to find out how we can hear the voice of God. Sometimes I ask people, I ask them, are you going to do the work of the Lord? And they say, if God says I should, I will. Amen. If God says I should do it, I will. If, if it's the will of God, I will. Amen. I, I ask them, are you going to do this? So if the Lord calls, as will you obey? So if, the, if God calls me, I will. It's a very nice way of staying away from the voice of God. It's a very easy way, a nice way of nicely following your own voice and doing what you want to do. You just have to say, if the Lord says, if the Lord wills, if the Lord speaks, and once the Lord says it clearly, I will do. Well, I have news for you. You are never really going to hear that voice in that way. You have to learn what I call the art of hearing. Are you listening to me? You have to learn the art of hearing. Hearing is also an art. An art is something you, you learn how to do or you, you do. You know, it, it, it's not... It's, it, it's the art of, of playing the piano, the art of uh, playing the guitar, you know, the art of, of, of singing beautifully like our BDs have just sung. You know, it, it's not something that just, you just get up and then it happens. You, you have to develop. That's why I wrote a book called The Art of Hearing the Voice of God, Following the Voice of God. And I'll recommend this book to all of you. Tell somebody, a book is being recommended to you. Did you hear? Or if, the, if, the, if, God, if God tells you to buy the book, you, you'll buy it, you see. As a person, if God tells you to buy it, you, you, you'll get it, you see. If God tells you to read it, uh, you'll read it, you see. God has to tell you to read it. Your mouth like if God tells you to read it. We have a nice way of staying away from the will of God. Very diplomatic way. And depending on who you are, you know, some people are really very diplomatic and very good at saying nicely, staying away from God's will. They have a nice way of just mulliganizing everything and just saying, hey, you know, as the Lord wills, we will be doing our best for the Lord. All right. But God wants to bless us. And I, I, I tell you, I believe that hearing God has been one of the greatest blessings for me. Sometimes I pray the whole day. I'm just hoping, waiting, that God will just speak just one thing to me. Because when God speaks to me, you know, and I'm praying, I can sit in one place for five hours. I become energized. I become invigorated. I become so happy as I sit there because the Lord has spoken to me. When I wait on the Lord, I just wait for just one voice, one something. God, speak. Hear me. Let me hear you. So sometimes when I wait on the Lord and I don't hear anything, you know, I feel so sad. I don't enjoy it. I want God to tell me something. How many want God to tell you something? You know, that's why you keep coming to church. Because when you come to church and you hear the preaching, you can feel that somehow God is talking to you. How many realize that something like God is talking to you? And the ones you don't want to hear, you say you are waiting to hear from God. You get it? But the volume is too loud, please. Could you down there? Sorry. Amen. So, so, but God wants to speak to us, and so we need to develop the art of hearing. The art of hearing. Tell three people the art of hearing. 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 Okay. Now, I'm going to start by starting with uh, chapter 4. I uh, know, chapter 3. 
12 kinds of voices every Christian should know about. Amen. 12 kinds of voices every Christian should know about. Let's turn our Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we want to read verse 10. If you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, what's going to happen? The Lord will set you down below. He'll set you at the back. He'll set you where? I see you on high. How many people are going up there on high? I see the Lord taking you up there. Amen. God will put you in the best car. Oh, I said God will put you in the best car. He'll put you in the best house. I said he'll put you in the best house. He'll give you the best place in your church. He'll put you on a throne in heaven. God will set you on high. And so you need to hear the voice and know the voice of God. And God will be able to start setting you on high. Setting you on high. Setting you on high. Now, a Christian or a human being is subject to many kinds of voices. And notice verse 10. What does it say? There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Let's read it again. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Amen. All right? There are many, many voices that are speaking to us all the time. Which one is the voice of God? Let me know the one which is the voice of God. When I know it, I will obey it. How many will obey it when you know it? How many will obey it when you know it? Will you obey it? Will you follow the voice of God? Now many people are following another voice and they claim they are following the voice of God. They are following the voice of Something else. And then they say, God told me. I remember a brother went to Bible school. And as he finished the Bible school, he was flowing around with all the sisters in the class and all the brothers in the Bible school class. Help me. Somebody help me with some volume, please. I don't want to shout. Help me. Now, as he finished school, one of the sisters, the, the, the graduation day, you know, they were going to part and go, everybody go back to where he came from. And on the graduation day, amen, are you listening to me? On the graduation day, a sister came up to him and said, Please, the Lord has spoken to me about you that we should spend the rest of our lives together. I'm telling you a true story. There's no fairy tale. When there's a fairy tale, I write F after the tale, but there's no F after this one. And the brother said, Oh, 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 oh. okay, he's heard what she's saying and I mean, he will also pray about it. And of course, I mean, he didn't want to be rude. Tell somebody, don't be rude. Don't look down on somebody. Amen. Just because the person proposed to you and you don't like it, you don't enjoy it. That's not mean that you should laugh at the person. So, just before the graduation ceremony, another sister came to him and said, the Lord spoke to me. The first one said the Lord spoke to her. And this other one too came and said, the Lord spoke to me about you as I was praying. And the Lord impressed upon my heart that you were the one that I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with. 
This is a revelation that the Lord has given to me. This one is not a fairy tale. I'm telling you the real life story. How many have watched a video and they say true life story? You, you, you've seen that before. This video is true life story. So, <laughs> the brother was getting scholarships. So maybe his head was getting swollen. I'm a very nice brother. And you know, a lot of people like me. But he said, oh. Mm -mm. oh. Uh, okay, I'll pray about it and then Whatever the Lord will say as we are going along, and if the Lord also speaks to me, so that I'm also going to pray. So they had the graduation ceremony. After the graduation ceremony, another sister came to him. A third sister. And said, Brother. Yesterday, when I was praying, the Lord has revealed something to me. And I wanted to. to Explain it to you. What is that? The Lord told me that. I don't want to say it. No, you, you say it. You say it. The Lord, the Lord told me that. The Lord told me that. I'm really shy. told me that you are the one for me. I know that it's not easy for me to say such a thing, but I don't want to disobey the voice of God. <laughs> All three of these claim that they had heard the voice of God. Which one of them had heard the voice of God? And in the end, he did not marry any of these three. He married somebody else. So, which one of these? So, let's say even God has spoken to one of them. It means two of them were not saying. And do you think they were bad people? I'm sure they were also good, nice sisters, just like you are. And they were also praying for a husband. And then the brother had was really a good brother. And he was somebody they desired to be with. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. So you must know which voice you are hearing. Because there are different voices. You heard something, but it's not God's voice. It's some other voice. That's why I said there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices. And none of these voices is without signification. All these voices are, have some importance. You must know the different voices. And you must know what they are saying and how important they are. And we must know that the voice you must follow is the voice of God. So what are, let me just give you 12 kinds of voices. There must be more. I'll just give you 12 different voices that you must know about. And then we'll talk about each of those voices as we go along. Amen. Amen. Number one, the voice of God himself. Hallelujah. The voice of God. Number two, the voice of your flesh speaking. The voice of your flesh. Hallelujah. The voice of your flesh. That is your body or your body. Your flesh. Your feelings. All right? The next one is the voice of your mind. Now, now those ladies, how many think that they were feeling something? They were feeling something. So they probably had a feeling. And they probably were hearing the voice of their flesh saying, you know. Like, for instance, when I met my wife, I saw her. She was a nice sister. There was a time I felt something inside. Oh, Lord. You see, but I, I, I wasn't sure. You get it? And why wasn't I sure? Was I attracted to her? Yes, I was. Did I like her? Yes, I did. Was she nice logically and all all those things. But I wasn't sure whether I was, which of the voices I was hearing. Because you must realize that you are a human being like everybody else and you are open to all kinds of voices. And so your duty is to try to distinguish between the voices. And when you got it clear that this is the voice of God, then you flow with it. That's, that's it's crucial in this life. If you are able to get that voice 
and follow that voice. God will set you on high. You keep going higher and higher and higher. The secret will be because you are following God's voice. The voice of, your, of the mind. The voice of the mind. Your mind. Your mind is your reason. Your reasoning. Your thinking. The next one, the voice of the devil. How do I know when the devil is speaking to me? Is it the devil who is leading me to go and marry this person or to, to go to this job? or what? How do I know? The next one, the voice of a prophet. A prophet comes to you and says, I saw you in a vision yesterday. Tell me offline. I want to speak to you about something. Tell me offline. Share me, share me what? Share me what? Uh, radio gold. 020224289. Come offline. <laughs> the next one, the voice of your pastor. These are important voices. You need to know these voices. The voice of your pastor. The next one, the voice of your friends. Sometimes we are doing things because our friends are cheering us on. And are saying, are you not also going to be like us? Why are you different? And the friends and the shoutings and the encouragement of the friends makes you go and take your life in a certain way. And actually that is what is leading you and not God's voice. The next one is the voice of your parents. Parents have a very strong voice. Sometimes I remember things my father said. Sometimes I remember things my mother said. Parents have a strong voice. But is it always the voice of God or is it the voice of God? The next one, the voice of your spirit, the human spirit. What does it mean? What is this voice? The voice of the human spirit. Your spirit, the voice of your spirit is actually your conscience. When you are born again, you have a good conscience. And sometimes something in there says no. Something in there says it's wrong. How many have had that feeling before? Something said it's wrong. Something said no. Something said no. It's not right. That's the voice of your spirit. The inside in a man. We'll talk about all that one day. The next one is the voice of circumstances. Circumstances. Circumstances have a way of telling you what to do. If there are rebels coming from the north, Rebels coming from the east and the sea is in the south. Where will you go, brother? I didn't hear. I'll say it again. I said, if there are rebels coming from the north and rebels coming from the east and the south is the sea, where will you go? You will go west. And as you are running with your chalewate and your rubber bag, don't say that the voice of God told you to go to the west. The circumstances told you to go to the west. That is why you are going to the west. You are not going because God has led you. You are going because circumstances are shouting loud, brother. If you don't go now, something that is not good will happen to you. And you look to the east, you realize there were rebels there. You look to the north, you realize there were rebels there. And you look to the south, and you realize the sea was there. You couldn't swim more than two meters. And so you decide to go to the west. And many people are following circumstances. They only do what circumstances dictate to them. That is why when they come out of school, they don't do well. Because in school, circumstances make you write exams. Circumstances make you go from first year to second year. Circumstances make you go from second year to third year. Circumstances make you go from third year to fourth year. But when you finish your fourth year or you finish your final year, circumstances are no longer telling you what to do. You have to now decide what you will do. <laughs> so at that point, you begin to see the differences between people. That's why after school, everybody seems so, so different. Sometimes you never see some people anymore. Everybody has his own way of taking decisions. You never meet people that you used to work with. The whole class, you're always together. You can be together for five years, seven years. But after school, everybody starts to follow whatever voice he's following. How many understand what I'm talking about? The next one is this voice of your own will. Your own will. What you want to do. All right? Now, all these voices are in operation in your life. Amen. And you may be 
40 years old, or you may be a young lady, 30 years old, or 40 years old, and somebody comes to you and it's not that you are, it's not that God has told you to get married to this person. It's just that, look, you need to get married. And hey, look, this is what is available. And I'm going for it. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And sometimes uh, we, we marry whom we know, whom we see, whom we meet. It's not that God has spoken. I, most of the people who marry, I don't think, heard from God. Many of these young people who are married, I don't think they really heard from God. Many of them heard from their flesh. <laughs> heard from their circumstances. Because you see, it's nice to give a good spiritual reason when you are, <laughs> you know, you are doing something. <laughs> the Spirit of God spoke to me and God told me, God revealed to me, you know. But the bottom line is also you see what you like. And before you realize you are proposing, then now that you've proposed or you've even rushed into the thing, you have to give explanations. And God said something. So brothers and sisters, we need to know what the voice of God, but if you are married, the voice of God is there already. He said, don't divorce. <laughs> Clearly. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? All right. So we want to look at these different voices and know which one we are going to follow. Ask the person next to you, which voice are you going to follow? Hallelujah. Now, let us look at the voice of your mind. Let's start with your mind. Amen. Now, God made you to consist of three parts. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Amen. Amen. Wow, this is a long chapter. <laughs> okay. Let us look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray God your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, God has made us have minds. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to tell you four things you must know about the voice of your mind. Number one, the mind is a great, or your mind is a great asset it's a great asset. You must know that your mind is something helpful to have. All right? Number two, you must know that, you do, number two, do not send your mind on vacation because you have become a spiritual person. Do not turn off your mind. Do not shut your mind. Do not send your mind on vacation because you have become a spiritual person. Now I've been a very spiritual person, so I've been praying. Then when the Lord spoke to me, then I distanced. So I'm going here just because the Lord may have spoken to you, but doesn't mean shut off your mind. Amen. Number three, a combination of the voice of the Spirit of God and the voice of your mind will lead you to promotion in life. Combining the voice of your spirit and the voice of your mind, the voice of the Holy Spirit or the voice of God and the voice of your mind will lead you to promotion. You must combine the two. Amen. Combine the voice of your mind and the voice of your spirit. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 8, Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Amen. And the next one is, too, the last thing you must know about the voice of your mind is, too much reasoning can turn you into a fool. When you reason too much, you become foolish. Too much thinking and analysis actually turns you into a fool. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Where is the disputer? 
arguments and arguers and disputers and quarreling people who are always thinking they are so wise. Where are they? The Bible says, has God not made them foolish? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the foolishness of God is stronger than men. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. Amen. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Amen. Too much reasoning can make you into a fool. All right, now let's take the first point. What did we say? The mind is a what? It's a great asset. That's the difference between people. The difference between many people in, in life can be seen, amen, in the way they develop their minds. Brother, stand up. You used to work for where? Yeah, yeah. Guinness, Ghana Limited. Guinness. You used to work for Guinness, Ghana Limited. You were making beer, or you were in the Malta Guinness section. All right, he was in the Malta section and not in the beer section. Now, and uh, when they employed you, did they ask you for your qualifications? Yes. They did. Can I have a microphone, please? Quick. They asked you for your qualifications. And did it make any difference in your salary or where they placed you? Yes, it did. It did? Uh, how, how, how much difference? Did it make a difference? Well, I think because of my qualification, I was a manager. You were a manager? And um, as a manager, we had access to a bar. You had access to a bar to which drink? the staff and did not have access to. The rest of the staff could not go to that yeah, drinking bar. It was just purely for the managers. <laughs> the only benefit he could see in the place was that he could go to a bar. Anyway, so you see, uh, his qualifications made a difference for him. And his qualification, where did you get your qualifications from? From UST. When you were at UST, you were throwing shot put and javelin. No. Is that what you were doing there? No. You were running around the games field. No, 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 no. What, what did you go to do there? Um, with computers. Computer science. Yeah. You were developing muscles. Yes. Muscles. No, 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 no. The mind. I was learning more about computers, software, programming. Good. So you see, he was working on his mind. How many years did you work on your mind? Um, I was there for two years. Two years. Two years. Some of you go, you don't want to spend two years in the university. Some of you spent four years. Well, what are you learning in school? Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering? Yes. You are doing beauty, beauty pageant there? No. Sexy dancing? No. You are learning electrical engineering. Yes. Do you use your muscles to do electrical no. engineering? What do you use? My mind. Your mind. You are developing your how many years? Four years. Four years. Electrical engineering. So when she finishes school and she goes somewhere for a job, they will ask you, and because you develop your mind some more, you will be better placed. Is that right or wrong? And, and the difference between people, us and animals is that some of us have developed our minds. That's the difference between you and a, and a chicken. That's why you can catch a snake. Have you ever thought about it that you can catch a lion? A lion which can kill you? The other time I was in South Africa and I was, we, were, we were driving through a place just for lions. You just drive like just around here. The lions were freely walking around. And they were there and the lions could have run out. And there was a man they could eat who was nearby and he was, not, he was free. And the lions too were free. And we drive through and the lions would come. Big lions. The king of the forest comes to us. But because their minds are not developed, they have a big head, but there's water inside their head. A water brain. They can't see that their freedom is just here. Just go this way and you are free. They don't know. So they walk around and they just wait there and then the people who own them will be using them to get money. They don't know that people are using them to, to get a lot of money. Charging people to look at them. If they knew, they would have asked for a commission. 
or a percentage, depending on which party they belong to. <laughs> snakes, very deadly snakes, which can kill all of us in a moment. We keep them in containers, and we bring people to come and look at them. Sharks. The other day, I went to a place they were displaying sharks, and there was a shark inside, like a swimming pool. Very big. And uh, there were things in the uh, uh, a shark. They had put so many things that sharks had eaten in the pool. And the shark was just gone. I said, hey, you even fear God. When the shark opens the mouth, it's like 10 times stronger than a lion's bite. When it's biting you like that, oh, oh. And I've been bitten by a lion before. On that very day, I was bitten by a lion. It was a baby lion. <laughs> Why do you think I'm still around? <laughs> And when the baby lion bit me, I really felt the strength of its teeth. And I thought to myself that if this thing were bigger and were to just help me, hold me like this, it's like my leg would come off instantly. I saw a lady, her arm was removed by a tiger. The tiger did this. She came near the cage. When you go to the, so don't go too near. She came near the cage. The tiger did this and removed her arm. Huh. Careful now. You may not enjoy the zoo anymore. <laughs> you enjoy such things. So your mind makes you superior. It makes you go higher. So the fact that you become spiritual, what's the second point? The fact that you, be, what does it say? Do not send your mind up. There are a whole lot of people because they are spiritual. It's like I've just prayed about it. And why did God give you a mind? God does not expect you to stand at Kaneshi and cross the road. And as you are crossing the road, you just close your eyes and say, Lord, I'm waiting for you to speak. Then I will know, Lord, just a word, then I will know your will, then I will take a step. So you close your eyes and close your eyes. Then you say, God has told me to cross now. And then you just start crossing. An omnibus will knock you down. A trotro will squash you. You will be pressed to the ground. You will be destroyed because you didn't use your mind. God does not expect you to throw your mind out and stop thinking just because you are spiritual. We are very spiritual here. We are prayerful and so on. But when it comes to certain things, we start thinking. You must analyze. You must think. You must use your mind. Because your mind is an asset given to you by God. And he expects you to use it. In Africa, often we don't use our minds. That's why white people rule over us. We are still colonized. In fact, they have kept, it's like they've kept us in a continent of poverty. And they don't want us to come to where they are. And they are, in many ways, they are far ahead of us anyway. And they look down on us. And they don't respect us. And they don't care about us. And I don't think they will ever care about us. Because often we don't use our minds. So now let, let's take even the police, the police force. There are armed robbers going all over the place. If something is happening, which number should we call? Which number should we call? The police don't seem to be able to, if, if you made me the commander of the police for just, I will resign by 5 o'clock, I'll start work at 8 and I'll close at 5 and that's the end. But between 8 and 5, I will ask, let's say, space phone, give us 024 222 222 so that we know that this is a police number. 024 all the numbers, we know that it is police number. If you are in Danzuma, ring 024 If you are this... I know people who have run away from their house. They can't stay in their houses because of armed robbers. You have built a house. You are leaving the house in Ghana because of armed robbers. And when you ask what number do you call it, 668342, 2286734, 33442633. Then when you, go, when you call the police, they will say, there's no transport, uh, there's no transport here. So tell the armed robbers that we are coming, we come in the evening. 
It's funny. The armed robbers even find the, they see the police as clowns. The police force look like a group of clowns. And then you see the cars that they bought, the big ones, Toyota, Tundra, big, big cars, and so on. Big, big, whatever. If you make me the commander of the police, give me two of those cars. I'll bring you 100 cars, small cars. I will take you to Holland and buy cars, $500 for one, $1,000 for one. I'll bring you 100 cars with the cost of two of those cars. And I'll fill all the police stations, five, 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 everybody has. Then you just put a, this thing on the top, really, 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 put one on. That's a police. That's a police car. With $50,000, you can have cars, all oh, there'll be police. You don't need to have some special, say we are looking for, a, we are getting a loan from this, in a, a grant from the government of Belgium to buy us a certain car, there's a grant from government of France to buy Peugeot's, Peugeot's, so that we can use uh, for the police. Uh, what do you call this in uh, Twitter? We don't have transportation at all. We don't have this. We don't. Sometimes we, we look so funny. A private man will go and bring a car, thousand dollars, and he has the car. The car is working perfectly. Even the cars are brought. You say we should import cars that are ten years old. Meanwhile, we import cars that's nine years old and use it till it's twenty-five years old. As if we are not thinking. And abroad, they are using those 10-year-old cars. It's as if our minds are not working. Two, our minds have gone on vacation. Two of those, these Toyota, these big cars that you see them driving, you know the cost of one? It will be between thirty dollars and $50,000. So with two or three of those cars, we can buy cars, we bring them all duty-free. We come and we set up every car. Even in Switzerland, they use bicycles. The police, they, use, they have bicycles. And you see them ride on a bicycle. I would read your gun, everything on a bicycle is moving. <laughs> Practical thinking. We built Kaneshi a uh, road overhead. Of, uh, overhead. Then they used two of the lanes to park. You see, three lanes like this, two are used for parking. So why did we build the three? Then they'll come and put a sign and say, no parking. Nobody obeys no sign. You have to build something that nobody can come here. White people don't put, they just do things you can't cross. You can't come there. That's all. I was talking to some of these people. I said, look, you people, you have to be practical. You have an aeroplane that is flying. When the plane flies, when it flies, it brings a bell. Why should it fly again? Yeah. Even once, it should never fly. But we will do things. Uh, and then we are not respected. We are not respected. Nobody respects that. You think people, you, let me ask you people, listen to this. If I, I owed you money, near they do. Golden, I owed you two million. I owe, what's, your, what's your name? Winifred, I owed you 200,000. I owed you, what's your name, my brother? Thompson, I owed you 4.2 million. And then I owed you, how much your name? Sylvia, I owed you 550,000. Auntie BN, I owed you uh, 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 6.2 million that I borrowed from you last December. And I owed you uh, 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 290,000 that I borrowed from you at church last year, November. I made you go to your house and go and collect the money. And then I owed you uh, 3 million that I borrowed from you. And I, I bought this sister from her school fees that she brought from Nigeria. I took her money. I said, I will send it back to you. But I really, do you think that as I'm walking here, you will have respect for me? Wake up. Mm. We are so proud of our loans. Don't let me start talking. When I start talking about these things, I don't enjoy it. We are so impractical. We are not practical at all. As if we, 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 we you can't, you, you see, Ghanaians have built personal houses with money. Ghanaians have money. And the road can never be built. So, okay, charge tolls. Tolls, tolls, so that we will charge. And then when we charge, we will pay and we will build the road without asking any white man for money. 
let's collect 5,000, 5,000 from the cars as they are going. And then actually not steal the money, but use it. Or even privatize. In England, I was there when they were selling the real the tracks, the, the tracks that re- trains drive on. They say from here to here is from Mr. Smith. From here to here is from this one, from here. So buy, anybody wants to buy. Private. When you are spiritual or superstitious, and you send your mind on vacation, you become a big fool, and you end up being at the mercy of everybody who is using his mind. That's right. That's right. Preach. You end up being at the mercy of those who use their minds. So in as much as the voice of your mind is not the voice of God, it's a voice you must be very careful about because God did not give you a spiritual thing so that you, you send your mind and say, now nah, I don't think again. All I do is, I, that's why sometimes when people, come and, when people come and tell me, what should I do? Sometimes I say, look, I'm not God. I can't, although I'm a spiritual person and I may know this or I may say this, at a point I don't want to tell you that, look, what I'm saying is I'm God and I, I'm not God. When Jesus raised uh, Jairus daughter from the dead you have been able to raise somebody from the dead the next thing he told the call the people hey, get water right now quickly give water is that not a common sense thing that somebody drink water yeah. he started to use his mind immediately as soon as he moved out of supernatural he moved into the natural said drink water quick fast drink it I've been able to raise heart lungs liver and other things are working again yet in the next moment the next breath I am saying give water to drink when he raised 5,000 from the, uh, he fed 5,000 people. Feeding 5,000 people before he fed the people. He said, when they go, they will faint. When they go, they will be tired. When they go, this will happen. When they go, there's no food. He was thinking of the practical things that had to do with the crowd. That, as if he had no miracle. Then the next moment, he was doing wild, wild miracles. So the fact that God is working with you in a supernatural way, does not mean that you should tell your mind, off, no school. That's what a lot of people did. He said, God has called you, so you won't go to school again. He said, God has called you, so I, I, I'm leaving school now. You've got to finish your school. Schooling is training of the mind. It doesn't necessarily mean that what you learn in school is what you do with your life. But you are developing it. You must start to think. I, I spend time thinking. There are times I just think. I think. I use my mind. I meditate. That's why I have meetings. That's why I have people to have meetings and tell me, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Because my mind is working. My favorite question in this life is, what do you think? Anybody who works with me close, you see that the commonest question is, what do you think? You may, sometimes I just, I just look at, I'll just be there in the car. Remember Saki, Pastor Eden, we'll be going somewhere now. I'll just say, what do you think? I have not asked anything. And then they'll say, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> What do you think? Do you think anything? Uh, is there anything in your mind? Don't send your mind on vacation. The Lord has called me, and yes, and the Lord has called you. Uh-huh. And what again? The Lord has called you. And the Lord has said, the Lord said that I should, uh, this is, uh, I, should, uh, I, should, I should support the church. Does that mean that you should sell your house? Okay, or does that mean that you sell your car? When you sell your car and you sell your house now, what will you do? So the Lord, the Lord has, the Lord has sent me. He said that I should. Uh, this is, my, my, this is my, my business. I shouldn't close it down because it's from Pharaoh. I should close it down because it's a Pharaoh business. So I won't go to work again. Stupid. The Bible says you should work. And if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. I, 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 I work. I'm a spiritual person, but I, I need to be paid. I need to live. I need to carry on with my life. I need to pay, be able to pay my school fees. I need to buy petrol. I need to survive. It's practical. Don't send your mind on vacation. People will always mock you when you turn your mind off. Start thinking. That's right. The Lord has told me that I should marry this uh, man. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. he hasn't gone to any this in, uh, schooling much although i i am a decent civil engineer from united states of technology i mean ust <laughs> but uh, he is more into corn mill he has been working with the corn mill 
So, but pastor, we are in love. That's the that was important that we are in love. And then above all, that when I went to church, see, his name is uh, Godfrey. And then when I went to church, the uh, uh, pastor had a word, and he said, "There's somebody in your life called God, 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 something, God, God, word, God, word, God, word, God, 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 and see, because of that, Pastor, the Lord Himself has spoken. Now, you are a civil engineer and you are married and you are at home. And uh, you are earning so much money because you are not the manager of Standard Chartered. And then uh, your boss, will, uh, your husband will call you. Uh, uh, Winifred. Winifred. Uh, this one, then every argument that can, you think because you are a civil engineer, you think because you are this, you think because you've gone to school, eh? nonsense, come here. This is now suddenly there's a problem. Imbalance. The Lord has spoken to me, so I'm going to marry somebody from another place. Which place? So the person is from this place, eh? Papua New Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the person is from this place, eh? This place is eh? Swiss or German. And you marry the person. One day I saw a brother. He said to me, Pastor, it's not easy. <laughs> The bishop, when I come over the bishop, I'm angry that they'll give me salad. I don't give me salad. He <laughs> said, Bishop, it's not easy, oh, it's not easy. When I come, then they give me salad and then sausage, bread. I said, I feel like eating kanker. I want to eat my corn kanker and I want to eat it. Ooh. But you said the Lord spoke to you when you were going to, I, I feel the presence of the Lord. The Lord said to me, I feel it, Lord. Your mind went on vacation. When we go to his relative, he'll be saying something, something, something. And I don't know what he said. Because you have married somebody from Kuwait. And the person, when he's talking to his relative, you don't know whether he's selling you or buying you. <laughs> Before you realize, Osama Bin Laden is coming to your house. <laughs> Because when he's speaking on the phone, he's talking to Osama Bin Laden. And you don't know. <laughs> Do you know that those people who did the hijacking, some of them were married to Germans, and so they didn't know at all. They saw their husband's pictures on the plane, that their husband was on the plane. They didn't have any idea. Because when they are speaking on the phone, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that it meant that tomorrow is the day of the bombing. <laughs> and then I'm leaving today and I'll never come back again. <laughs> but when you are going to marry, you said the Lord has led me. Okay, it's true, the Lord has said. Now let's use your mind also and start thinking about the thing. Tell someone, start thinking, start thinking, start thinking, start thinking. We don't just do spiritual things without thinking. We must think about it. We must analyze because God gave you a great blessing. And when you use your mind, you'll go up in life. Amen. We'll continue next week. Stand to your feet. In the name of Jesus. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, you are here today. You want to give your life to Jesus. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. I want to be born again. I want to be saved. Jesus. Jesus. 
I don't want to go to hell. Think about it carefully, brother. Please pray with me. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand. I want to pray with you. Jesus. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. God bless you. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Wonderful. If you've lifted up your hand, come to me in the front here. I want to pray with come you. Come all the way. Come. Come all the way. Very, very quickly. Put your hands together and welcome them. You lifted your hand up. We want to give your life to Christ. We want to be born again. Come, wonderful. God wonderful. bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Think about it carefully. God wants to save you. God doesn't want you to go to hell. Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. You want to join them. Someone invited you. You want to say, Pastor, today is my day. My day. I want to give my life to Jesus. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. We are waiting for you. We are here because of you. Come. All the way, all the way. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Say, I, I give my life to you today. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. And my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I want to save you. I want to follow you the rest of my days. From today, I am a child of God. I am born again. I'm born again. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Please write my name. Please write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For hearing my prayer. For hearing my prayer. From today. From today. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. From today. From today. I am born again. I am born again. I will serve Jesus. I will serve Jesus. The rest of my days. The rest of my days. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.